Hi, this is Michael from Office Orbiter. Today I want to show you GoodSync, which is my favorite file synchronization program from Cyber Systems. I've been using GoodSync for about six or seven years now as my daily backup program. I use GoodSync at least once a day, sometimes even more when I finish time consuming work or something. And it takes only a moment to secure this work with GoodSync. The main features of GoodSync are file synchronization and backup. And I think the best way to take a look at GoodSync is to simply dive right in and create a couple of examples of file synchronization and the way you can use GoodSync for backup. Okay, so here we are with GoodSync. This is GoodSync for Windows and GoodSync is available for Mac also. And this is version 9.9.22 .9 and is freshly upgraded and downloaded for this video. And I've set up this overview so that we can have a good look at GoodSync while still see what we're doing with the folders that we're working with on the left side and the right side, or the source and destination side, if you will. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new job. And like most other tasks in GoodSync, you can do this by using the buttons in the user interface. And to do this by pressing the little plus up here in the corner. You could also do it in the job menu where you can also control other job issues like uh, delete, uh, rename and so on. But let's just do it the simple way and click the plus button here in the corner. So now you have two options. The first is synchronize, which is of course the file synchronization feature of GoodSync. And this is a two-way scenario where GoodSync is trying to balance out the folders or computers that you have chosen on left and right and synchronize the changes that you have made in either location. And the next job type is the backup, which is a more traditional scenario where you have uh, your left side master the right side, uh, but in this case any changes that you make on the right side will not survive the next analysis and synchronization uh, run of GoodSync. Okay, so let's set up a synchronized job. Let's give it a name and call it sync test and press OK. The next task is to define the left side and the right side. And here you have the option to choose the computer where you can choose local drives, external drives, USB sticks or whatever you want to use. And here on your left you can see that you have a bunch of cloud services that you can use if you use cloud storage at all. So I'm going to navigate to the folder that you see on your lower left, where I've created a couple of test folders that we can use in these examples. So I'm going to navigate to the sync source folder on my work drive. And you can turn on this feature down here, select multiple items, so that you can click select the items that you want to include in this job. But now I'm going to choose this one, sync source, press OK. And in this folder I have four images that we can play with in this example. And next of course I'm going to choose the right side of the job. So I'm going to browse again and find my USB stick where I have prepared a couple of folders that we can use for these examples. So I'm going to use this sync destination folder and I'll navigate to this location and choose this folder. Press OK. And now you're being asked if you want to accept the use of a portable file path which in this case means that GoodSync would recognize my USB stick even if I would use it in another port at some point. So I'll just accept this. And next we need to let GoodSync analyze this job. And by pressing the Analyze button down here on the left, GoodSync will compare the two folders and copy, delete or rename files that need to be changed on the other side. So I'll just go ahead and press Analyze. And now we can have a look at the large item area in the middle where you can now see the four images on your left. And when you move right, you'll get size and time information about the files. And here in the middle, you have some small override icons that you can use to exclude or include files from the sync job. If, for example, I didn't want this lower image to be a part of the job, I could press this little circular button, which would exclude the image. But in this case, I want to include the image. And to do that, I'll just press the right green arrow. And now the image has been re-included in the sync job. 
So let's return to the actions area and press sync to have good sync copy the four images to the right side of the job. And let me quickly adjust the display here so we can see and compare the images. So now we can see that the files have been copied and left and right is now identical. The last button in the action panel is the auto feature which will let you set up synchronize or backup jobs at intervals of so many minutes or hours. And of course you can set it up to run at a specific time. And if you continue towards the right, there's a panel called tree view which consists of a number of filters that you can use to see what's included, what's excluded, what's set to be deleted and so on. And the last part of the main user interface is the log window at the bottom where you get messages from GoodSync about uh, disk space problems or other conflicts. Okay, so let's have a look at how this works and keeping in mind that this is a synchronization job the two folders at the bottom are supposed to remain identical no matter what we do on either side. So let's start out by deleting this T-Rex skeleton here on the left and let GoodSync analyze the situation and press sync. And indeed the T-Rex disappeared on the right side as well. Next I'll try to rename this image to Lizard. Press Analyze, press Sync, and the Lizard image on the right was updated to Lizard. So far so good. What we do on the left is being mirrored to the right. Now let's try the other way around. And let's start with deleting this winter image and see what happens. Press Analyze. And now the image is in line to be deleted in the other direction. So I'll press Sync and the image is deleted on the left side. And let's try to uh, rename this uh, on the right to Sunset. And let GoodSync analyze the situation and run a sync. And the file is renamed nicely. So I hope this gave you a good idea of how this job type works and whether or not it would be something that you can use in your workflow. So let's move on and have a look at the backup job. And the steps involved in setting this up are exactly the same as with the sync job. So I've prepared two folders for the example on your left, the backup source folder with the same four images. And on your right, the same four images have been copied into a backup destination folder. So again, let's do a couple of tests and let's call this first winter image, winter. And let's call the sunset image, sunset. And let's let GoodSync analyze this. So now you can see it wants to delete the two images over here. And it wants to copy these two images to the backup destination. And I'll press Sync. So now I can see Sunset and Winter. Now that this is a backup destination, you really shouldn't touch anything. But if you do, delete something, rename this to T-Rex. Okay, and press Analyze. Then you can see it wants to put the two original images back. It wants to delete T-Rex, which we changed illegally and it wants to put winter back into the destination folder. Press sync. So T-Rex has been renamed. Sunset is back and winter is back. So that concludes the two examples of the two job types that GoodSync offers. And I hope that my examples were clear and that you got a good idea of what GoodSync might be able to do for you. So the last thing I want to show you today is the solution to a small problem that you can get with GoodSync when your hard drives are starting to get full. However, it's simply an issue with a safety feature setting and not a problem per se. But since this feature is on by default, it's good to know upfront before you actually have the problem. 
However, this is uh, meant as a little extra help, so if you think the video has run long enough as it is, feel free to skip ahead. So I've set up another little test scenario where I have a couple of folders that are ready to burst, and this means that everything I want to put into the left side will have to be at the expense of something else. So I have this QuickTime movie file over here that I want to make room for in the left folder. So in order to create this space, I'm going to delete these three PDF files. So I'll say yes to that and run an analysis, followed by a sync. So the result is now two folders that are seemingly empty. And I should have ample space for this movie now. And I'll go get the movie and move that into the left folder. Now I'll run another analysis. But now I'm getting an error that I don't have enough disk space to hold this file on the right side. And the problem is that there's a built-in trash can in GoodSync, not unlike the one we know from Windows or the equivalent on Mac. So that we can see what's going on, I've now turned on show hidden files and folders in my system. And this reveals a ghosted folder called gsdata. And when I go into the gsdata folder, there's another folder called saved. And as you can see, this folder contains the three files that I just deleted. And obviously this is the reason I was unable to copy the movie earlier. So you can find this feature if you go and right click the job tab and go to options. And in here you'll find a general tab where there is a feature called save deleted replaced files. And this is the trash can that I've been talking about. And you can leave this on or off depending on your preferences and amount of available disk space. If you decide to leave this feature on, you have the option to adjust this number, which is the number of days that goes between a system cleanup of this folder. And this will prevent the folder from growing too much. So to quickly return to the problem with the movie that we couldn't copy, what we can do is to simply delete the three files. But this could be hundreds if not thousands of files in a real situation. So another way to do it is to go to the job menu tab and go select the delete gsdata folders. And GoodSync now tells us that if we choose to delete these folders, it will keep the GoodSync system data intact. So I'll accept, and we can see the folders are disappearing. So now I'll run another analysis and press sync. And the movie is being copied without problems this time. So that was a quick look at GoodSync. And I think it's pretty clear that I'm a huge fan of the program, and I highly recommend GoodSync. And I'd like to quickly show you how I use it in my backup strategy. So this may seem like a, an excessive backup strategy, but I'm spending so much time creating content and with my work as a 3D artist, and losing data is simply not an option to me. So I'm basically running two independent strains of backup. Um, one is based on GoodSync, as I mentioned, where I use the backup feature. And parallel to that, I'm running a traditional backup program. And this kind of program is different from GoodSync in the way that it typically creates one file which is compressed and as such is a snapshot of a particular point in time. So when you disregard the file synchronization part of GoodSync and compare the backup feature of GoodSync with another traditional backup program, then you can say that they are really trying to do the same thing, which is secure your data but they're doing so with a fundamentally different approach. And to me it's the combination of the two that makes a really strong backup strategy. But no software is perfect, and uh, GoodSync has its strengths and weaknesses. And uh, let's have a quick look at those. And one of the main advantages of GoodSync is that it's extremely fast to run the daily backup or the small in-between backups. And uh, one of my favorite features is that I can always access these files and see if everything is alright or get something if I need to. Whereas a uh, traditional backup program is uh, kind of a message in a bottle. Uh, you can't get to anything un unless you break the bottle, so to speak. And then there's the price value comparison and $30 for a PC or Mac license that doesn't expire. 
that's a good deal in my book. But as it's so often the case, uh, strength can also be viewed as a weakness. And one of the advantages you get with a traditional backup software is that you get these sealed, compressed versions that are inaccessible unless you recover them with the backup program itself. So obviously this leaves some room for regret, meaning that if you delete something or change something that you wish you hadn't, you have the option to go back and, and get something. But as I mentioned, to me it's all about the combination of the two.